Hello and welcome to another episode of Geek Lunch Me. I'm your host Chris as usual. As you can see I'm surrounded by stuff today and this is going to be a look at all the projects I worked on uh, during the pandemic, during lockdown, those times when we were stuck indoors with not much to do and apparently a lot of people turned um, to hobbies and back to sort of uh, things things they're familiar with, things they've done in their childhood um, and I was no exception. I've always sort of painted and done model making um, and the pandemic um, is definitely no exception and I got stuck into quite a few projects. Um, the Razor Crest is here in front of me, that was like one of the last things I did um, right at the end of the pandemic. There are a series of videos uh, that you can see on my channel going through that completely um, and the um, Captain America shield that I painted um, a month or so ago as well. But uh, yeah, what we'll do is we'll take a look at what I've uh, did during lockdown um, I'll throw up some uh, photos. I, did, I didn't film a lot of it because I wasn't really, uh, This was, a lot of this was done before I sort of started the YouTube channel. Um, but I've got some photos of various uh, things in different stages. I'll throw them up as necessary. So enjoy. So just to kick things off, yeah, there is the uh, Ravel's 172 uh, scale uh, Razor Crest from uh, Star Wars uh, The Mandalorian. Uh, great kit to put together. I won't go into too much detail. As I say, uh, there's, um, I think there's four videos um, where I show you step by step um, how to do that. So this is one of the first things I did during lockdown, and this is the Narcissus lifeboat uh, from Alien uh, that Ripley escapes uh, from uh, the alien uh, as the Stromo is blowing up um, at the end of the film that she then drifts around for uh, 57 years in. Now this kit I built as a teenager um, when I wasn't really good at building kits. I did it all by hand. I didn't have an airbrush or anything like that. Um, it was okay. Didn't do a great job. So I thought I would revamp it. Now I've got some more skills. So first thing I did was um, completely respray it, um, gloss coat it, uh, put a dark wash on to bring out all the panel lines uh, yeah then wipe that all back um, and matte coat it. The markings were the first time I've ever had a go at uh, making my own uh, decals. Um, I drew them up in Photoshop um, and then printed them out onto uh, some special transfer paper that you can get uh, which I got off eBay obviously at the time now the shops are open during the pandemic and um, yeah they turned out pretty pretty well. They're obviously not 100% uh, accurate but um, yeah they do a pretty good job. Uh, and so and then I weathered it all down using the same uh, Tamiya uh, sort of weathering pastels kits that I used uh, on the Razor Crest. Um, I say check out the video uh, on how to use those. But um, yeah, I was quite impressed with how this came back up. I'm saying considering it's quite an old kit. Unfortunately, you say these are um, these were made a long time ago. Um, you can't get any more except say, if you want to look on things like eBay. Um, and they'll probably set you back um, quite a lot of money now. Uh, this one, the, the Solarco, the Dropship, uh, the Power Loader, uh, quite a few alien kits they did at the time. Um, uh, it was Halcyon, I think, was the company that made them. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, yeah, they're quite pricey. Um, yeah, so that was one I did, uh, say, right back at the beginning of lockdown, that one. Right, try and get this one in frame. Uh, this was quite an easy one. This is uh, Princess Leia's Blaster uh, from A New Hope. Uh, this is, I think, it's made by a company called Ruby's. Uh, in the states again this was just an ebay um buy i think it was about nine pounds i think they might have gone up a bit since then um and i think it was i can't remember if this one was white or bright orange when i started it but um obviously they make toy guns these days in bright colors uh so obviously people uh, so the police don't uh you know shoot people by accident when they're brandishing them but um yeah so a quick spray um sort of dry brushed on some silvers, uh, some gloss black on this part. And um, yeah, I think it's, um, is it Leah's uh, Sporting Blaster, I think it's called? But yeah, that one came out quite nice. and um, was not a lot of work on that one. In a similar vein uh, is this uh, Boba Fett's uh, Blaster, which uh, I think is from Hasbro, I think it was, which was bright green and gray. Um, again, pretty easy to spray the whole thing black. Um, some brown on the, uh, on the stock here. And then everything else uh, sort of gets dry brushed with silvers and then uh, mix up an orange, um, like a rust colour. Um, you just slap it, you know, mix it really watery, um, slap it all in and then just wipe it back with a cloth. Um, put some silver highlights on some of the edges. Uh, and yeah, it, it really easy to do, you know, only the work really of a couple of hours. Um, you can get it done in the afternoon. Um, these were quite reasonable on, um, on eBay as well. Um, this one still works. Um, Yeah, so it still, it still functions. Um, yeah, so that was uh, Boba Fett's blaster. Also from Hasbro was uh, Kylo Ren's uh, lightsaber hilt here. Um, they do a series of 
uh, lightsabers where uh, for kids where you can connect them various different pieces together um uh, yeah and they're pretty good but uh the only one that's really sort of remotely accurate is is kylo ren's one uh you know with it with its distinctive sort of t-bar at the top um it's actually a pretty good sculpt so with this one it was again a case of spraying it black um there was a hole in the bottom uh, where it connects to others so i just cut a disc of plastic card put that on there painted it red um, these bits here, the crossbars, um, these are actually slightly too short, so I had to extend them, uh, just that little bit there and that little bit there. That's actually uh, Pritt stick glue tubes, uh, which I found to be pretty much the exact diameter, so I just hacked all them apart, put them on, um, sprayed the whole thing silver, I think it was first, put a gloss coat on to protect it, put the black on the top, and then rubbed the silver back uh, to do all the distressing. Um, but as you can see, it comes up, it's quite, um, it's quite accurate. I also filled this one up with... Um, Plaster of Paris, um, you probably can't see it in there. This Plaster of Paris comes up um, just before uh, these T-sections to about here. Uh, it's just painted black inside. Um, if you can see in there, I just stuck some uh, metal washers uh, on into those as well, just to sort of finish it off. But yeah, Kylo's um, lightsaber come up pretty nicely. Now, of course, you can't have Kylo's lightsaber uh, without his helmet as well. Um, now, this was um, a cheap buy on eBay. Again, this is basically like a knockoff mask uh, from China. I think it cost me about 25, 30 quid. Um, I mean, you can get expensive. Um, several companies make expensive helmets like these, and you know, you'll pay anything up to sort of you know, 1,100 quid for them. Um, uh, these, all you're looking for um, with things like this is that the, that the shape is there. Um, you know, the paint job on this wasn't very good, um, which is fine because I was just going to completely respray it. So yeah, this was just undercoated on black. The main, the hardest part was getting the silver done, um, having to mask off. If you've seen any of my other videos doing model building, I absolutely hate masking um, with, a, with a venom. And um, so I had to mask off all those stripes. But as you can see, I think it, come up, uh, it turned out pretty well. I say for, for such a cheap mask, it, it's wearable if you want to. I just um, put a bit of fabric in uh, over the eye socket you can see out of it um uh, you can see this is the uh, his helmet has been put back together uh, in from rise of skywalker which is why it's got the red lines on it a more accomplished um you know model maker prop builder um you could probably gouge them out put some sort of lighting in leds to make them all glow up um are, are sort of beyond me uh, electronics and things like that so i was really interested in the paint job but um yeah that was a cheap helmet off ebay uh, from china for that one and talking of cheap Chinese knockoffs, um, this was another eBay purchase of a uh, first order Stormtrooper helmet. Again, you can buy replicas of these from several companies that will cost you five, six, seven, eight hundred quid. And again, this one, the form was fine, um, it was just an appalling paint job. So, again, I uh, had to uh, a lot of masking, um, but literally, it was undercoated, you know, gloss white. It, it, you know, it, was, it was then masking it all off to do the gloss black bits, um, was the problem. But as you can see, the actual form um, of the helmet is really good. It's all there. You know, it's not 100% accurate, but um, it's good enough to display. So, yeah, it was quite a simple paint job, I say, except for the masking process. But um, obviously, if you've got the skills and the tools and some sort of workshop, you can do a lot of work on these. But if you want, you know, if you can just find something that's got, uh, you know, 95%, you know, already there of the actual form. And all you're doing is just uh, a better paint job on it to bring it out. Then I'll recommend, um, yeah, giving it a go. And then finally, uh, this is a Rancor kit um, that I had up in my loft for years and had never done anything with it, yeah, bits of it. Um, I'd been glued together, um, bits of it were missing. Um, uh, yeah, so I finally decided it was time to put it together. Um, it's a really nice kit. I say it's years old. I don't know if you can get them anymore. You might be able to find them on eBay. I suspect the price has probably gone up now um, because of the Rancor appearing in Book of Boba Fett. But this, um, so I know I've definitely got some photos I'll throw up of this one uh, in various stages. Uh, it was mostly quite a simple airbrushing um, and then just putting on some shading washes and then a lot of dry brushing because obviously the Rancor's got a lot of texture in it. Um, uh, some gloss in the mouth and the eyes there, make it look like he's uh, drooling a bit. The base was simply PVA glue, uh, sprinkled with sand, um, a little bit of gravel from the garden. Um, the bigger lumps are some polystyrene that I ripped up. I then sprayed it all, uh, say, and dry brushed it with the sort of sandy, dirty colours. You can see there's lots of nice detail on this kit. Um, so it, was, uh, it was very cheap to buy, I remember, at the time. Um, so obviously a lot more than that now, um, I expect, on the secondary market. But um, yeah, for the amount of detail that's in it, it's, um, it was it was quite reasonable. And then we can get see there's his uh, 
and get the camera to focus. There we go. There's the uh, Gamorian guard, hapless, that's fallen in uh, to the Rancor pit and is about to be uh, the Rancor's dinner. So there you go. It gives you an idea of what I was up to um, during the pandemic um, and the sort of geeky things um, that I did to occupy my time. Um, I hope um, you've enjoyed seeing them. I hope they've inspired you uh, to do your own uh, geeky builds. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Uh, if you have, uh, hit the thumbs up, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you'll really be helping us out a great deal. Um, until next time, eat geek and be merry.